Today I'm giving you the video of removing the interior from a Jeep Grand Cherokee. We got some big plans for this Jeep. It's going to have a Tesla swap. That's right, this is gonna be an all electric Jeep. In order to do all the things we need to do, we actually have to take out a lot of the interior. So we need to replace the accelerator pedal. The brake system we're gonna redo, we're gonna use a Tesla assisted brake system. We also have to swap out things like the heater core and we need to make sure that we've got an electric AC unit. So today we're gonna to take out the interior and I'm gonna show you the best way I found to do all this. Let's get to it. For today's sponsor, we have Extravis. This is a triangle cutter robot vacuum. It is dedicated for pets family. So this looks like the charging base. You can say it's very nicely made, very smooth, very sleek. If you are a pet owner, you'll likely have a little bit of hair around your house. So I believe one of the reasons why golden retrievers are so soft is they shed their entire coat every single day. So this is Finn, my one year old puppy, and he tends to shed a lot. So this is one of the great things about technology is you can actually have something do it for you. Hi. Wow, that was unexpected. So it looks like it's advanced enough to know when it's charging and it greets you. So this has a hair triangle cutter. It has an interactive cat laser. It has an anion emitter. It also has an oil aromatherapy diffuser. It is self-emptying and self-charging. It has obstacle avoidance. It also has a smart retract mop. And for thick rugs and things, it can climb up 0.79 inches or about two centimeters. So it also has a break point resume. So if during the course of vacuuming, the battery gets to a certain level and it needs to stop and recharge, it will recharge and then it'll actually come back after that break and resume. All right, we are downloading the app. So it looks like it found the device. I'm gonna go ahead and add it. So it looks like it's being added successfully, great. So that is so cool. It's got some cameras or something that kind of help up it look and locate and find all the areas to be vacuumed. So basically what it did is it scanned my whole floor plan. It kind of identifies things like table or couch. And so it knows that there's things that it can't go around, but it also kind of divided, like it knows that this is tile, like a different than this is kind of wood floor. So yeah, this is really, really very cool. All right. So we're going to schedule a cleaning. We're just going to do just a sweep. So we've got Close, quiet, balanced, turbo, or max. We'll go with balanced. So again, you can have it go once or more than once. So again, I can just tell it which section to do or not to do. So again, if I wanted one area to mop, another area to do vacuuming, we can do that. So I'm just gonna have it do, this is our kitchen, we're just gonna have it do that one. And then we're gonna have it come on in about two minutes. So in theory, in about a minute, it should start. All right, it just said start cleaning. So again, I've told it to do the kitchen, so it should come on this side and start. So I will say it's pretty quiet. I would say it's more quiet than just a standard vacuum. So if you're ready to upgrade your vacuum experience, I'll leave a link in the video description below. So this is a Nissan 300ZX that I did not that long ago. When I would take apart things, I would capture all the screws or bolts or whatever in a bag and then label it, thinking that that would be good enough. Well, if you spend a couple weeks doing something and then try and put it back, you do not remember what things were what, even if they're labeled. So this one says gauge cluster. I thought that was a good idea, but again, you've got kind of like these gauge pods. You've got like this uh, trim above, you've got trim below, you've got things even inside here. So it's really hard to know, okay, what did those go to? So I've got a new method I'm trying and I'd like to show you. All right, so the big secret, I'm stealing my daughter's Polaroid camera. I bought some film and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a picture of each, I'll call it a uh, place of assembly and actually put arrows to where the fasteners were. So that way I'll put the picture in with the fasteners. So when I take it out, I can just look at the picture and know exactly where things go. All right, so my first uh, few fasteners, I've got two that are right here. And then I've got similar fasteners that are right there and there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a picture, try and get both this and that in the same frame, and then I'll just draw little arrows to where they go. All right, so it'll fully develop in a couple minutes. Take out the fasteners and put it in the bag. All right, so that's the picture. I'm just gonna highlight, I got a green and a red. So I don't know which one's gonna show better, but we'll just highlight where those fasteners go. So I'll just throw that in the bag with fasteners. So now I don't really have to come up with a descriptive term for what the, what it is, because you picture is way better. I am though gonna number them because this is like the first thing I took out, so it'll be the last thing that goes in. So when I'm looking to do things, I'll just look for numbers. So this one's gonna be number one. All right, we're gonna start off just with a handful of tools. We got a straight and Phillips screwdriver. This is a little uh, plastic trim removal tool, a pick. This one helps get off uh, some of those connectors and other things. So we'll see how far we can get with these. So those are just all clips. There's two here, two there, and then one goes right there. Okay, there we go. There is that oh. one. 
So one other trick I'm doing is kind of replacing the screws in the spots where they were, so that way I don't have to take pictures or label them. All right, so this is the radio out of the Nissan, and I believe this is the antenna port. This is how this one is, meaning it's got a little short little pigtail and you can connect it. The one in the Jeep, so here's the attachment point, but there's like no connection. I think the solution is just gonna be brute force. Oh my gosh, there we go. All right, just reconnected the battery so we can move the seats. Oh, nice, we got some stuff by the heater vent here. Kirkland, soft and chewy. I'm sure that uh, smelled great. Oh, it's like impossible. There we go. All right, it always seems like they hide a bolt under the cup holder or like the floor in here. So we'll see if they did the same thing. Looks like a 10 millimeter. So we'll get that one off and I think this whole center console should go. Boom. Come on, get out, out. There we go. There's the glove box. There we go. <laughs> there we go, there's one. There we go. There we go. I think it's just that one bolt right there. That's the one that helps it kind of pivot and telescope. I think that one's got to come out before the steering column comes out. Come out. Yes. <laughs> All right, we are getting pretty close. We've got the blower, we've got the AC evaporator right back there, heater core, but we still have this kind of metal frame. We'll do that. I think this this top one may also need to come off. We'll kind of take a look. You probably can't tell, but there's fly, there's another fly, another fly, another fly. I don't know what it is, uh, but they've decided to join the garage. So I've decided to go hunting. So this isn't sponsored, it's just fun. So it just, uh, it takes salt and it kind of shoots it like a shotgun. There we go. One. Yeah. Not much in the way of a cleanup, but uh, gets rid of some of those pesky houseflies. All right, the uh, top part of the dash can't come out because it's kind of caught under this one. So I think these probably come off here. Take this A-pillar cover off.
Because it like wants to pull this, but I don't, I don't see where it's connected. All right, in the middle here, there are no screws, but there's like these metal tabs here and here that uh, I, you gotta like push them down to get this bar out without pulling out all that. So I think that's the last thing I'm hoping, probably one other thing, but uh, getting super close. All right, I keep finding connection points. So like this whole fuse panel is connected. I think it's got one place to disconnect it though, so I can disconnect that plug, but man alive. Had to undo all the cabling here, pull it back through there. We're getting there. Okay, are you free now? Oh man, and there's another one down here. There's like, oh my gosh. There's two more connectors. Okay, now you're done, right? Right? Ouch. Okay, are we free? I think we're free. No, there's one more. Okay. All right, we'll go check the other side. I believe this side's free. <laughs> all right, so we've got everything out that we need to get out. Got things laid all over the garage, but I have been really impressed with our documentation and I think it'll go very easily back together. All right, so we've got about all that we need to get out for the interior. You might be asking, why in the world did you do all this? There's just a couple things that we needed to get to and unfortunately we had to take off most of the dash. So the heater core, so the customer would like heat and we need to swap that out. So a traditional heater core operates on lines going to and from the engine to kind of produce that heat. So we're gonna take that out and put in an electric heater. The other one is on the other side, I'll show you. So on the driver's side, we needed to get to the accelerator pedal as well as the brake pedal. We maybe could have done that under the dash, but again, this is gonna be a lot easier access. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna push the wires up out of the way, but I'm gonna take a good scan of the placement of the accelerator pedal and brake pedal because those are two things we need to change as well. So the brake side, we're gonna do a Tesla brake booster. And on the accelerator pedal, we're gonna do a Tesla accelerator pedal. So both those, we just need to get the precise pedal locations and have good scan so we can create some CAD that allow brackets and things to adapt to those pedals. Okay, so here's the question. I guess initially in my head, I just thought, okay, I'll do a rear motor and a front motor. Well, this does have kind of a differential up front and one in the rear. So I could put a motor kind of right in the middle, have power go that way as well as that way. So that is one option. Or we could just stick with the two motors. Because I was looking back here, this is at the back. So this is the differential and it is solid, meaning from the differential all the way to the wheel on both sides. So if we wanted to put a motor back here, we'd have to kind of figure out that because the suspension is all kind of tied into this rigid point. All right, I did check the output shaft. So if I rotate this, that goes essentially that direction. That one also goes that direction. So I was wondering if put the motor in a similar situation, if that wouldn't work because the differentials are set up backwards, but it would work. So that is an option. I have talked to the customer. This is not gonna be like a rock crawling vehicle, mainly just normal use, potentially like some trails or something like that. So I think the limited slip differential just with the center motor would be really good. But let me know in the comments. Often I am overlooking something. So let me know in the comments what you think. All right, so one other thing I'm gonna do before we go, uh, we didn't do this last time when we took out the engine. We already got a starting weight. This will be kind of the fully stripped down weight. All right, so I put all the interior pieces just back in the car, just kind of in the seat area, because all those are gonna go back. But this will give us good, I'll call it starting weight or weight loss after the engine. All right, lock in your guesses. I'll show the original starting weight here. You can guess how much you think we lost. And here is what we got. So 3,243 pounds. So it's 55.6%. So okay, left to right, looks like 55.6 to the right. Yeah, it does seem like the left side's quite a bit lighter. I guess that's true. We did take out the gas tank that was on the left side. And to be honest, the transfer case and drive shafts were kind of over there too. It's total, so this is in kilograms, 1,472 kilograms. All right, well, there's all your weights. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this episode. We were able to get a lot of the interior removed as much as we need to. So thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Oh, dude.